We are HTLA Radio 1. You will lower your shields and prepare to be boarded. We will add to your distinctiveness, your advertisers, and your sponsors to our own. Resistance is futile. This program is intended for mature audiences only. If you have any homicidal or suicidal feelings, please consult a doctor before listening to this program. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, good evening. Welcome to the, the late, late, late edition of today's Coffee and Cigarettes. Yes, I know. It was supposed to be on at 7. What the hell is going on, Crash? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you and uh, release some, some new and exciting information that uh, you'll, you'll only get here, at least until Kate gets it up on the old website. Oh, listen to that. I got the drums going already. Yes, yes, more news of Mark Keeler firing, yes, yesterday on the show, <laughs> and a whole bunch of other stuff, including doll, oh, the cause. We'll be back in just a few, gang, and uh, sit down and grab some coffee and light up a cigarette, because you got to tune to HTLA Radio 1's Coffee and Cigarettes. <laughs> Yes, you do. Let's uh, let's hope that music warms you up on on this cold, cold Wednesday. Yes, the the cold hump day in New York. And you've got it tuned to today's coffee and cigarettes Wednesday double shot. Because I think we, yeah, no, I know we all need a double shot of something today. Help us get through the week and all that good stuff. Yeah. Today's show is, as always, brought to you in part by Tim Hortons, New York City. That's right, Tim Hortons and their eight locations in the Grand City to serve your coffee needs. Yes. Okay. You can go on with that there, Steve Vai, and your bad self. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. There it is. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes, it's another day, another dollar. Isn't it another dollar? Yeah. Well, you know, as always, uh, I have joining me live via satellite. I know, because I did it myself today. ba dum cha <laughs> Yes, the, the one, the only, Mr. Louis Lawless. Yes, friend and mentor, uh, coming to us, uh, well, I believe live, from the Mill Bay Studios in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Hello, Louis. Are you there? Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. I think we'll take that to the uh, the fact that Louis is indeed here, and also joining us from his lavish studio apartment in Crenville, Tennessee. No, Cren Crenshaw, Crenshaw, ten. No. Uh, Clarksville. Thank you. Yes, Tennessee is the one, the only, Mister. Chris Top. You know, a couple of years ago, and I thought this just happened to old men. I Maybe that's saying something. I don't know. But I fell in the shower, and people made fun of me forever. They said I should have got one of those little ducky things. <laughs> right. Um, the ducky things. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what was I thinking? Yes. Yes. Uh, lots to talk about in the show today. And, and yes, yes, don't worry. We're going to get the cause in there because, oh, my God. He raped me 79 years ago, and I want restitution. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, isn't that? Yeah. Okay. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, of course I'm going to be talking about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Help me. Uh, a bunch of other stuff, too. A bunch of other stuff, too. Especially a woman with Ebola who died in a Brooklyn hair salon today. Yes. But don't worry. Don't let that headline scare you. Because if you read 75 paragraphs down at the bottom in very small print, it says that she was found not to have Ebola. Badumcha. Right. So, uh, yeah. And Obama. Oh, Obama. Oh, Obama on the range. About to announce immigration today. He's going to let it all go. (laughs) And to work we'll all go. But we still don't get no medical benefits. Yes, the, the dreaded immigration announcement is coming Thursday. Yes, yes, we'll be talking about that today too. And uh, the monster winter storm. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, Hollywood apparently is giving up on Bill Cosby. (laughs) And the Black Friday decline. Ooh, interesting. What's that you may say? Well, stay tuned, kids, because I'm not ticking around here, am I, kids? (laughs) And speaking of that, there's a lawsuit just underway that's challenging, quote, under God in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you can believe that. <laughs> yes, I don't know why you would challenge that. I, I, I don't get that whole thing, but we'll, we'll get into it. Yes, you, you rest assured, you, you mark my words and mark your calendars and all that good fun stuff. We're going to have a, a heck of a nice sit down today with some good old coffee and a cigaretta. Yes. Oh, but uh, kind of, kind of with all of this, you know, where do I start? I'm always clueless when I start this show because there's so many things that I'm going to cover, and uh, you know, I have to in- intersperse it with you know even smatterings of coffee and cigarettes, un PC as it may be, along with equal smatterings of. Louis over at Mill Bay Studios, don't want to make him, you know, feel left out or, heaven forbid, have him fall asleep on the air. And, you know, Chris, with his head injury, is still kind of worrying me. It's so, like my head just, it, it bounced off the side, of it like a basketball, it just bounced and then it hit it again and then bounced a little bit. And I had a big knot on my head uh, for like three weeks after, it was like a golf ball. It was, it was horrible. Yeah, see, uh, like that. Uh, you know, <laughs> we got to get that stuff in. But actually today I do have a little bit of direction and where I'm going at the start of the show because I'm doing everything myself. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. I have somebody else in the booth here today with me at Coffee and Cigarettes here. And uh, she <laughs> is is going to do so much better at the job that Mark Keeler once had. Um, and the reason I know this is because uh, when we were interviewing originally for the uh, man in the booth position, and and I was actually going to blame you know the hiring of Mark Keeler on Kate too, but I thought no, that's pretty pretty low. I can't I can't do that to her. So I'm not. I'm going to take responsibility. Yes, it, it was me who hired him in the first damn place, and and yes, you know he has had his ups and downs and in and outs. Uh, with, you know, actually being able to to hit buttons correctly, the correct buttons, I should say, on time uh, and on budget, for that matter, Jesus. Um, but, you know, I, I was able to, uh, you know, actually get him to, well, almost to the point where, yeah, this is, this is hard because I have to be PC. <laughs> Yeah, me, PC, go figure. Uh, no, actually, I, I don't have to be PC. That's that's the whole beauty. Um, I hired him, so I guess I'll take the heat. You know, it was it was my mistake, I guess, ultimately. And, um, you know, I did run it by Kate, and, of course, she, she did, you know, agree to it. So I guess she's, you know, partly responsible as far as that goes. But, nah, 
ultimately, I think the the whole thing rests on me. And I, d- I don't know. I, I have a funny feeling that, you know, it might be just that I maybe didn't give enough time to training. You know, really, when, when I look back and I think about it, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, maybe – Maybe in 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 my rush to to have him, you know, fulfill his obligations to 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 really come into his own here at HTLA and and really, I don't know, give me that level that I was I was expecting, or maybe that's not the right word. Maybe hoping, praying for. I don't I don't know, but but I guess really what I'm trying to say is that. Ultimately, the whole thing was my fault, and um, you know, I, I feel that I should apologize to you, the audience, uh, because you know, certainly, you know, it all happened live on the air yesterday, and uh, you know, for that, uh, I definitely apologize. Um, it was, uh, <laughs> well, what it was, it was my fault. I'm just going to say it. It was my fault. My fault. And uh, I'm, go- I'm going to apologize for it and leave it at that, I think, is what I will do. Uh, and I will, you know, pledge and vow not, I, I repeat, not to to allow that kind of stuff to happen again. And, and, and one way, uh, you know, that I, I really feel that I, I can accomplish that is, is by taking extra time, you know, to train the new person. Yeah, and, well, to be fair, I'm not really saying a new person uh, to be PC, you know, that's that's what we actually have to call girls. Yes, now, apparently. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, PC, uh, that's me. Um, yeah, no. So we've, we've got a girl. Yes, we do. Uh, Jenny McCartney, not to be confused with a Jenny McCarthy, the Playboy playmate, or uh, JJ McCartney, the 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 host uh, announcer man. There, uh, no, she's she's uh, well, <laughs> she's she's something. Um, so so maybe I, I need to take extra time uh, training her. Oh yeah. There you go. Uh, anywho, uh, I wanted to actually run this little clip right at the start of the show here today. Uh, it's from Adam Carolla, and it's uh, it's kind of an interesting listen, and I think you'll understand why uh, I wanted to throw this on after you hear it. So uh, here it is. Okay. Look, if they had a Native American talking about fracking, it wouldn't have been more on on the nose than sure. the hefty chicks talking about being comfortable in their body. She Thank moved you. herself yeah. she, to tears. Yeah. All right. Um, in a, can I just say this? In a world where everyone is freaked out by third-hand smoke and you're not supposed to have soda pops that are more than 16 ounces and we're worried about um, salmon that's raised on a farm versus... And uh, like I said, it's all smoking, 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 tobacco, tobacco, tobacco. Hey, let's ban e-cigarettes. How about the negative health uh, aspects of being 150 pounds overweight? Yeah. Is anyone, or, or that, that's to be celebrated? Pride and shame is one thing, but if you were to ask any doctor, would you want your child to be obese, overweight, chubby even, versus uh, have a healthy body, of course they would say, of course they would say that they want to. I, I think the, but I think the point that she's trying to make is we're coming to understand that you can't shame people into being thin. It, or at the very least, you can't shame them into being thin in a healthy way. They can shove their fingers down their throat. They can take a ton of diet pills. But you're not going to be able to shame them into being healthy. It just doesn't work. Right. Um, and, well, sort of and sort of not. Because it, I've, I've seen plenty of instances where people did get shamed into just about everything that worked. But there's still a difference between not shaming somebody and then celebrating somebody who's unhealthy. We don't celebrate smokers. They're unhealthy. We don't celebrate uh, who, whatever. People don't wear seatbelts. It's, it's, it's not safe. You know what I mean? Like, we don't celebrate people riding motorcycles with no helmet. Like, there's so this thing of, like, I need to be celebrated for who I am. Ironically, coming from the people who are freaked out over, you know, a like I said, they've invented third-hand smoke. Uh, all, 
radon gas is, is seeping from the floors. There's environmental allergies. I mean, all the people, the, the people that are purelling the most are celebrating the hefty chicks the most. You'll die faster being overweight than you will be a smoker. But are you truly worried about her health, or are no. you just do you, exactly? I'm saying it's it's hypocritical to go after third hand smoke and then celebrate hefty checks. It's they're both have negative health effects. Yeah, the scale goes from shame to pride with a, a nice zero in the middle. And while I agree that we probably shouldn't, sh I don't think we should shame people who are overweight, but I don't think we should celebrate it either. I mean, there's a healthy, take care of yourself, but, you know, yeah. I'm not going to plus right. or minus. Anyway. But if she's, if she's uh, you know, two fist and a hoagie, mm -hmm. I don't get fat by watching her do that. No. I might get a little cancer on me if somebody's blowing a cigarette in my face. Yeah, but the, the big argument of, as a society, we all pay because we have to pay your health bills and uh, for smokers, and we do all that. Well, it's the same with the two-fisted and the hoagie thing. Either way, I tuned in just at the moment where the uh, hefty chick was telling me she never felt better about well, herself. That's unfortunate. I think was, we can all agree. <laughs> she was crying. And listen, I don't, I, I don't know, and you guys tell me, I don't want to sound like a, a prick. I'm just saying, when did we all have to feel marvelous about ourselves? I mean, what I'm saying is, is feel marvelous about your role in life. You know, feel, be a marvelous dad, be a marvelous mom, be a marvelous motorist, be a marvelous <laughs> lover. Marvelous motorist. Hey, lover. <laughs> Yeah, well, there it is, and and that clip kind of grabbed me today when I was checking out that show because, uh, well, you know, not really kind of ever subscribing to the whole PC dealio. Um, the, the 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 smoking thing in 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 my book is is done. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry because something that was an epidemic in this country long before smoking. Was, of course, what? Does anybody know? No. Of course you don't. <laughs> drinking. Yes, alcoholics. Alcohol. Drinking. As a, as a drinking alcohol. Yeah, baby. I was drinking the alcohol. Alcohol is killed by far. By far more. Men, women, children. Oh, man. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Just just look up the stats. They're pretty staggering. Um, so when it comes to, you know, people complaining about cigarettes and third hand smoke and now they're even complaining about the 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 steam, the water vapor that has been proven, you know, before it was ever, ever released unto the earth. It was proven that it was not a carcinogen. For those of you just joining us that don't know what a carcinogen is, that's a cancer-causing blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's none of that. There's none of that. There just isn't. And, oh, man. It's like grab a brain. Did, did you hear, uh, who was that? I think that was Gina Grad at the end of that conversation there, laughing there about Adam's little statement about, you know, be a good motorist. Um, when she said that, you know, well, I think if somebody blows cancer on me, mm -hmm. you can't blow cancer on somebody. Actually, in 1998, an Indian, yes, from India, not, not the American Apaches or the Algonquin Iroquois. No, 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 no. The Indians from India... There was a 17-year-old prodigy at the time there who was a geneticist. And he happens to be the geneticist who, in the, in the books of the geneticism, in my Cosby, um, uh, actually mapped and proved that cancer occurs when it's predisposed in your genetic code. That's why you can have people that have smoked for 80 and 90 years. Uh, in the old folks' home at 101, still shaking out on the veranda of the beautiful, sprawling old folks' home, having that cigarette just before he dies, because he's not dying of cancer, he's dying of old age. 
And, uh, you know, let's not forget those health freaks who at, you know, 28 years old are out there jogging marathons every day and drop dead from a heart attack. It was predisposed. They didn't smoke when they were younger. Hell no. They're health freaks. And they still drop dead at 28. So think about all that kind of stuff before you open your mouth and start bitching about the cigarette smoking. Yeah. And then, of course, the third biggest killer. Actually, no. No, what the hell am I talking about? The second biggest killer in the United States, obesity. What do you think about obesity there, Louie? I think it should be short and sweet. I can barely hear you today. What the hell's going on, man? Yes, yes, it should be short and sweet. But is it ever? No, no. Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Okay, all right. I'll go with you on that one. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to go for our first commercial break here at Coffee and Cigarettes. And when we come back, I don't know, we might just get into the cause. For the cause. Back in two, gang. And you're listening to HTLA Radio 1 New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions, abundant with rich, fertile soil? What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended ground and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it. Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. When you have cable and your picture freezes, you get irritable. When you get irritable, your work suffers. When your work suffers, the wrong man is convicted. When the wrong man is convicted, he has time to think. When he has time to think, he thinks about you a lot. And when he thinks about you a lot... Your house explodes. Don't have your house explode. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. I always said shoes are like women, they inspire beautiful music. But what about these? Stilettos sound like this. <laughs> What does my fragrance inspire? Mmm, that's got soul. My ties are beautiful. They don't need music. Bringing the stars together. That's the magic of Macy's. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow. Best Talk Radio, HTLA Radio 1, New York. Oh 
Boom, and thank you for that one, Mr. Mister Chris Top, right there. Chris, are you still with us? Why is it one time a month women go insane for 30 days? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, Jen, uh, yeah, you got to watch that there. Yeah. Uh, you are back. You are listening, of course, to Coffee and Cigarettes, late, late, late night, Wednesday, double shot edition. Um, 32 degrees, Central Park right now, uh, cloudy and damn cold. Thank you very much. Damn, damn cold. <sighs> well, what what am I going to do here? <laughs> now... <clears throat> This is kind of a, an interesting situation uh, for you coffee and cigarettes goers, because as you know, I'm, well, for the most part, I guess you could say I'm against the black man. And no, not in a racial way. No. Simply using the color of their skin to put them into a cultural group, and thereby, thereby identifying said group, and quote statistics that have so far in the entire history I've been on the air, never been favorable for the black man. Now, <clears throat> I can qualify this. Yes, I can. Um, and, and, and further prove that I am not a racist by what I'm about to say pertaining to the Bill Cosby allegations. Yes, I know. Some of you are like, dude, what? <laughs> You're confused. I can understand that. But you see, some people that everybody's quick to label racists because they say bad things about the black people or they say bad things about the Indians or they say bad things about Muslims or they say bad... You can't label them a racist if they say one bad thing and you call a racist because there's other times when they will say positive things towards the same racial group. And this, for me is most certainly one of those times. Now, I'm quite sure everybody in the coffee shop here today is completely well-versed and up on the latest uh, scandal surrounding comedian, actor, singer, all-around Muppet madman Bill Cosby. The Sesame Streeter from way back. Yes, the Sesame Streeter from before Derek Jeter was Derek Jeter. Yeah, that was pretty good, I thought. No? Yeah, well, on a serious note, I'm I'm being serious. This is my serious face. Then I know this isn't <laughs> it's not TV, you ass. Yeah. Well, anywho, um, you, you, you're gonna. I'm I'm gonna get into the story just in case some of you in the old shop here aren't up to uh, snuff on what's going on with Bill Cosby. But uh, and then, of course, I'm going to give you my rendition. Yes, my speculation, just like everybody else seems to do in media today about what they think is really going on. <laughs> I might as well, right? Ah. Yes. Yes, that was nice. Okay. Um, yes, that's Jenny. Yeah, there she is. Um, yeah, yeah. So for decades, Cosby was thought of in glowing terms as a prospective comedian, upbeat pitchman, and genial father figure. His public personality made him more than rich. It made him a role model, admired for his support of education and his no-nonsense talks on parenting and achievements. In recent weeks, that persona has been paired with another much darker image. <laughs> See what they did there? Darker image? Ah, oh, and I'm racist, yeah. On Tuesday, the famed comedian and TV star was accused of rape by Janice Dickinson. Yes, a, a formal, former model Janice Dickinson. In an interview on Entertainment Tonight, Dickinson claimed Cosby assaulted her in 1982. That, that's, well, gee, that, that's back when, man, the, the hair was big. I think it should be short and sweet. Well, the hair wasn't short and sweet back then. I can, I can it's tell like you. It's like my head just it it bounced off the side of it like a basketball. It just okay, bounced. all right, all right. We know. All right. Anyway, Cosby's attorney Marty Singer was blunt in his response. Janice Dickinson's story, accusing Bill Cosby of rape, is a lie. He told CNN in a direct statement. "Quote: There is a glaring contradiction between what she is claiming now for the first time." 
and what she wrote in her own book in 2002 and what she told the media in 2002. Ms. Dickinson did an interview with the New York Observer in September of 2002 entitled Interview with a Vamp, completely contradicting her now new story about Mr. Cosby. That interview a dozen years ago said that she didn't want to go to bed with him and he blew her off. Her publisher, Harper Collins, can confirm that no attorney representing Mr. Cosby tried to kill the alleged rape story since there was no such story, or tried to prevent her from saying whatever she wanted about Bill Cosby in her book. He added, documentary proof is Miss Dickinson's own words show that her story about something she now claims happened back in 1982 is a fabricated lie. Dickinson's allegations come on the heels of another rape accusations. Cosby has repeatedly said the accusations are untrue. He has never been prosecuted. Over the weekend, Cosby was asked about serious allegations raised by you. Yes. Do you have any response to those charges? Huh? Well, the internet took light of that, and there was all kinds of responses. Now I, I think the number is up to 10 different women that have come forward now and say, he raped them, dates going as far back as 1969. And yes, just for the record, that is 10 years before Ozzy Osbourne became the Prince of Darkness. Oh yeah. In response, Cosby shook his head in silence. On Sunday, the Cosby attorney John P. Schmidt released a witten... Let's try that again, Jen. There we go. Good girl. Good job. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> John Smith released a witten... Wit, oh, no, not again. Okay. Over the weekend, a Cosby attorney, John P. Smith, released a written statement over the last several weeks, decade-old discredited allegations against Mr. Cosby have resurfaced, Schmidt said. The fact that they are being repeated does not make them true. Mr. Cosby does not intend to dignify these allegations with any comment or response whatsoever. The accusations have received wide publicity in recent weeks. Yes. Do you know CNN's running 24-hour coverage of that now? I guess the ISIS thing got a little boring. The accusations have received wide publicity in recent weeks, spurred in particular by two events. A viral video of comedian Hannibal Burris, which he called Cosby a rapist, and an attempt to create a Cosby meme sponsored by Cosby's own Twitter account. And this, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is where all of this crap is coming from. That's right. That's right. My assertion is that all these women are coming forward now saying that he raped them from dates going from 20 years ago back to 1969 being the earliest allegation has all surfaced because of the memes. Now, the memes he put out on his Cosby account there, um, what was it, three Mondays ago? Uh, he wanted to have the people do memes for his new show coming up. Well, he got a bunch of memes for his new show coming up, and he got a bunch of other stuff that was really funny, and he got a bunch of other, you know, entertainment industry-related stuff put up, and that, that was all good. And then he got, like, three, yes, three from the, what, 1,500 responses? He got, like, three that even mentioned the word rape. And as soon as that happened, those three were the ones most shared on Twitter. Yes, not the funny ones, not the entertainment ones, not the ones that they actually asked for, but these stupid three that uh, originated from, of course, unnamed accounts, and certainly none of these women were tweeting these. That just got the buzz going. That's how that works in the biz, you know. Yeah. And now there's like ten women who've all been raped by Cosby. You know, you know what it makes me want to do? I'll tell you what it makes me want to do. It makes me want to go to CNN and all those news agencies and tell them that when I was a 12-year-old boy and Cosby came through my town and did a show, he he raped me. And, oh, wait, what? He, he gave me a drink and then a, a pill, and then I woke up 
the next morning with a sore ass. Yes, and, and when indeed that story goes international, because of course it will, because, you know, I've said so and we're all credible because we say so, um, then, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all of those media outlets look like total asses by then turning my story completely over, referencing this show as an example, and then come clean with, no, I made the whole thing up, and you all bought it hook, line, and sinker and want to send him to the gallows. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think all of this is unjustified BS. I think the one person who got an out-of-court settlement years and years and years and years and years ago who can't actually reopen or say anything to this whole thing now is just almost killing herself because this is another moment of fame she could have had. But it's slipped away because of that settlement agreement, hasn't it? Doesn't that just suck? Yeah. But all these other women, hey... There's a money grab here. Let's get some lawyers. Let's let's say some stuff and let's get rolling on this because this is big. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Not behind the lynch mob at all in this whole thing. The accusations have received wide publicity in recent weeks, spurred by particular events, and I've went over what those events were, in particular the Twitter account Meme Ordelio. The allegations have taken toll on Cosby's family, friendly, fatherly image. On Tuesday, Netflix announced that a Cosby special that was set to debut November 28th would be postponed. Then on Wednesday, yes, the NBC network that was, uh, well... Uh, it's been a family affair with the Cosby show for 20 years originally, and they've got another Cosby show that was in the works has been scuttled. Yes, yeah, so for all you non-Navy folks out there, that means gone, not postponed, not put on hiatus, not, not, we'll, we'll talk about it later. It's been scuttled. It's, it's been sunk, done, gone. And how is that fair? What I want to know is the woman who was uh, raped there in 1969. You know, they, they didn't look uh, too well towards the Negro in 1969, and wouldn't matter if he was Bill Cosby then or not. Certainly charges would have been laid and pursued in criminal courts. But no, charges were never filed. In a later instance, in 1982, when the case was actually brought before a district attorney in Los Angeles, the case was not pursued in sufficient evidence. So, yeah. But now he's done it like almost, you know, another eight or nine times, and, and none of them, none of them went to the hospital, none of them had rape kits done, none of, you know, this is magic, magic, magic time in, in our lives now. We've got DNA. You could prove beyond a reasonable doubt, beyond all doubt, that Bill Cosby did indeed rape you. And then, and then, oh yes, the world would then know that Bill Cosby is a rapist, instead of the world is speculating that Cosby is a rapist. And and really, to to do this to a man who has given so much, um, and yes, yes, I am talking about a black man, yes, yes, Bill Cosby, he has given so much, not just to the entertainment industry, not just to the the comedy genre, not not just to education, not just to his own culture, his own people, for God's sake. Don't forget, this is the man who went on ad nauseum about his own race of African Americans within the borders of this country, calling each other the N-word. And I'm not talking about Negro, yes, the word that Martin Luther King fought for, in 1963, which has now been kicked out of the U.S. Army's regulation book because that's no longer acceptable. Yeah, a little angry today in the coffee shop. I know. I'm sorry. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, to, to all those who, who think I'm racist, yeah. <laughs> you just get back in your wagon and get out of here. What say you, Louie? Are you awake? That was a mistake on my part. Uh, what, the Negro thing? The awake? I lived in I lived in Greenwich Village for a while when I first started out as an actor. Oh. I, 
I don't think he told us that yet today, has he? Hmm. That's good. That's good. And what a hell of an actor you were. In fact, I don't think now the the show's been running a week and a half, and I think I'm pretty sure actually that I failed to mention everybody what your greatest acting role was. And and this is fun, folks. You you can go look this up. Captain Northside. Yes, Captain Northside. Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. I know. Um, Louis was actually a sci-fi legend. Yes. Yes, probably, yeah, I'm going to say better than William Shatner. Yes. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, no. Um, Louis was Captain Northside on a very kick-butt uh, sci-fi uh, film. Uh, yes, yes, it was a B film, but, you know, it was pretty much uh, A-grade around Hollywood at the time. Uh, back in, what was that, uh, Louis, 1978? That was a mistake on my part. Well, okay. Okay. Um, Planet of the Dinosaurs, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, do you know, <laughs> you can go to YouTube, not Vimeo, not any of the other places, go to YouTube. I'm telling you, you got to do this. This is awesome. Uh, in fact, I know Kennedy, uh, Kennedy and Adrian and maybe Carol, uh, you guys are listening in Canada. Do yourself a favor. Go to YouTube right now. Uh, put in the search thing, uh, Captain Northside, Planet of the Dinosaurs. The entire movie is there uh, from start to finish. It's, it's a science fiction epic. And, uh, you know, our, our beloved co-host here, Louis, uh, was indeed Captain Northside. I think it should be short and sweet. Well, I'll tell you, after I watched your movie for about 40 minutes, I was thinking the same thing. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to continue my Cosby rant after we take this, uh, short commercial break. And when we come back, we'll, we'll finish up the Cosby dealio and get on to more important things like Sumatra and Chinese football and all that good stuff. We'll be back in two, gang. And you're listening to HTLA Radio 1 New York. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. What can I make you this morning? How about our new flatbread breakfast paninis? Made fresh, just for you, with your favorite breakfast ingredients on maple or multigrain flatbread, then grilled to hot, melted perfection. Just $2.99. Who couldn't warm up to that? Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. In the studio with us today are millions of Americans. Millions, welcome. Our pleasure. We're asking millions of Americans to get their children's eyes examined once a year. All in favor of annual eye exams for children three and up say, I. I. Say, I care means you care. I care means you care. Now say, Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Sally sells she sells. Oops. Gotcha. By the seashore. A public service message of the American Optometric Association. When you have cable and can't record all your shows, you feel unhappy. When you feel unhappy, you go to happy hour. When you go to happy hour, you're up for anything. When you're up for anything, you head to a Turkish bathhouse. When you head to a Turkish bathhouse, you meet Charlie Sheen. And when you meet Charlie Sheen, you reenact scenes from Platoon with Charlie Sheen. Don't reenact scenes from Platoon with Charlie Sheen. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. I stood outside assessing the situation. I knew it could be rough in there, but how rough? There was no way to know for sure. Hey, guys. Daddy, it's pink! But hey, a new house, it's a blank <laughs> canvas, and we got a great one, thanks to a really low mortgage rate from Navy Federal Credit Union. You could pink. So she's a princess. You got a problem with that? Hoorah! Hoorah! Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coca-Cola. Life is much more fun when you're refreshed. And Coke refreshes your best, it's the refreshing S. Food goes better with fun, goes better with you, go better with Coke. The real life one puts extra fun in you and everything you do. So things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coke. You've got it locked, 
to New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1, New York. Oh, that's right, you do. Wake the hell up. Uh, yes, and I, I was helping out those Coke singers with their song today. I don't know. It's just stuff bouncing around here that's making me want to sing. Isn't that right, Jenny? <laughs> there you go. Well, you are back with HTLA Radio 1 and our late, late, late coffee and cigarettes, the Wednesday Double Shot at HTLARadio1.com. Yes, and we're, we're talking the cause tonight. Yes, no, not the, the cancer cause, although we did talk about that earlier, too. <laughs> yes, 34 degrees in Central Park right now, still partially cloudy, no more snow as yet, up to the minute. <laughs> we're trying to keep warm in here, aren't we, Jen? Yes. Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, so before the break, uh, basically kind of gave you my, uh, hmm, uh, cancer. My coffee and cigarettes rendition of uh, my my now non-racism, because <laughs> I'm, I'm not, idiots. Um, yeah, yeah, Bill Cosby uh, suffering. Uh, a, a great deal, I would think. You know, stop and think about it if it was you. 50-plus years in the entertainment industry, you know, you're you're in the twilight years. You're, you're kind of semi-retired, but now you're getting back into it with a new show on NBC. And you've got a comedy special coming out, and it's, it's just a, a good life, you know, overall. It, it's a damn good life, and there you go. And then, you know, your PR people put out on your Twitter that you... Uh, you want some memes done for your new show and your new stuff you're doing. And, and wow, you know, what an honor to be invited publicly. You know, we live in an age where, you know, Bill Cosby can invite you to do a meme. But then, of course, with everything, you're going to get the negative stuff. And it started with this rape stuff right there. Then all of a sudden, the stories come out of the woodwork left, right, and center. <sighs> This this is something I could see more along the lines of Richard Pryor. Yeah, maybe even, oh, what's his name? Hmm. What is his name? Beverly Hills Cop, help me out here. What's his name? Ah, Eddie Murphy, thank you. Thank you very much, listener in the old chat room there. Yes, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, Raw, come on. Nobody's going to accuse him of rape during Raw, the epitome of his, his career there with raping and raping. And his 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 dick, talking about his dick. And what about uh, what's his face there? That white guy around that same time. Uh, he I don't know Jimmy the the Mick or something. What the hell was his name? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good with comedians. Oh yeah, Jen. That's another thing. You actually have to to keep control of those kids. Um, they they like to cheer and boo, kind of out of sync. You know, not when they're supposed to. Yeah, Mark and I were having problems with them the last couple of weeks with this, and I ended up telling them that you know I'd pay them all twenty bucks each at the end of every show if they did the cheers only when they were cued to. And and today, <laughs> today is not going to be a payday. No. Mm-hmm. See, I'm an equal opportunity employer, you know. Mark Keeler, I, I gave him a shot, and, uh, well, he failed for the last time here last night, just before the first commercial break, so I, I dealt with stuff. And now today, with the lovely three Jennies, I mean two, no, Jenny, yes, in the booth there, um, she's... Uh, She's going to get some extra training time for me, and and we're going to we're going to make it good, and and we're going to get her to to whip those kids into shape, right, kids? Yeah. That's what I thought you'd say. Yeah. <sighs> well, the allegations have taken a toll on Cosby's family for sure, and uh, now Cosby's business interests with Netflix and NBC now closing down. The events detailed by Cosby's accusers took place over many decades. Five women have gone on record now in describing them. Another woman, Andrea Constand, approached Montgomery County, Pennsylvania authorities in 2005, but 
prosecutors decided they had insufficient evidence or credibility to pursue any criminal charges. So I guess they already knew about her and her past and moved on. The desire on our part to move forward was pretty strong, Bruce Castor. Then the Montgomery County District Attorney told CNN's New Day on Wednesday. The problem with the case was that she waited a year until she told police about it, and her background was less than credible. No, oh, so like she was a hooker or something. Yeah, there you go. So, at the time, Cosby's lawyer Walter M. Phillips Jr. told CNN the allegations were utterly preposterous and plainly bizarre. Constand later filed a civil suit. Her lawyer said they found 13 Jane Doe witnesses with similar stories. However, Constand's suit was settled in 2006 and the witnesses were never called. Those terms have never been disclosed. Here are some details on the other women. Name Joan Tarshus, a 19-year-old actress at the time, 1969. Yes, at the time Cosby was a year removed from his hit TV series, I Spy, starting work on a new sitcom, The Bill Cosby Show, and one of the most popular comedians in America, his 1968 album, To Russell My Brother, Whom I Slept With, had won a Grammy as his best comedy performance in March. Cosby's fifth straight win in that category at the time. The accusation is Tarshis, mm -hmm, who later became a journalist and music industry publicist, said she met Cosby while visiting Los Angeles. The two became friendly. That's right, baby. One night after taping of the, his sitcom, he invited her back to his bungalow. Yes. <laughs> he used the old Desi Arnaz bungalow. And fixed her a red eye, apparently a Bloody Mary topped with beer, her regular drink. The next thing I remember was coming to on his couch while being undressed, she told Hollywood Elsewhere. I was sickened by what was happening to me and shocked that this man I had idolized was now raping me. Of course, I let it happen and told no one. It was the first of two incidents, because she enjoyed the first one so much. Ah, she went public in 2014. Next victim, Tamara Green, who was an aspiring model in her early 20s at the time, that time being 1970. <laughs> at the time, Cosby was starring on The Cosby Show. A year later, he would start guesting on the children's program, The Electric Company. The accusation, Green, who later became an attorney... <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is from an attorney now said she met Cosby uh, at a working lunch with several other people. She was suffering from the flu, and Cosby went into some sort of office area at the back of the restaurant, and he produced two capsules in his hand, she told the Today Show's Matt Lauer. She took the cap capsules, which at first made her feel great, but then left her almost literally face down on the table of this restaurant. Cosby took her to her apartment and started groping me and kissing me and touching me and handling me. You know, You know how. Talk, taking off my clothes, Green said, after telling Cosby if he didn't kill me and he tried to rape me, I was going to go very badly for him. He left two $100 bills on our coffee table and left, apparently. When Green went public, a lawyer for Cosby told today, Miss Green's allegations are absolutely false. Mr. Cosby does not know the name Tamara Green or maiden name Tamara Lucier. And the incident she describes did not happen. The fact I may have repeated this story to others is not corroboration. She went public in 2005. Ah, now the, the good old Janice Dick Inson, who was a noted model at the time, and the time was 1982. At the time, Cosby was touring as a comedian and well-known for his Jell-O and Coca-Cola commercials. That accusation, Dickinson says that she and Cosby had dinner in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, and gave her a glass of red wine and a pill she believed was for menstrual cramps. Yeah, because Bill Cosby would carry around menstrual medication for you. I'm poking holes in this, and I'm not even a lawyer. The last thing I remember, she says, was Bill Cosby in a patchwork robe, dropping his robe and getting on top of me, and I remember a lot of pain. 
<laughs> well, you know what they say. Dickinson said she wanted to write about the incident in her 2002 memoir, No Lifeguard on Duty, but said Cosby's lawyers told her to remove the details. Well, that's funny, seeing as how the publisher said there was no such demands made. And they have to do what's called clearance before they can actually publish a book, you ninny. Dickinson said she wanted to write about the incident, and uh, yeah, the details. Yes, Marty Singer. The Cosby attorney told TheWiretap.com that her claim was untrue. Neither Mr. Cosby nor any of his representatives ever in communication with the publisher about any alleged rape, sexual or assault, or anything else pertaining to that book, he said. She went public uh, again there last week in 2014. Beth Ferrier. Yes, another model in her early 20s back in 1985. At this time, Cosby was a touring comedian, advertising pitchman, and starting in 1984, the star of The Cosby Show, the number one show on television. The accusation Ferrier told Philadelphia Daily News and People magazine is that she met Cosby in Denver in the mid-80s. He mentored her for a time, but one night she said he gave her a drugged cappuccino and I woke up in my car parking lot with my clothes all a mess, she said. I wondered, I still wonder, what did he do with me? Was my bra unhooked? Okay, so she's claiming she doesn't even know what he did with her. So how can she allege rape? You'd actually have to know the events to... Yeah, never mind. The two later conducted an on-and-off consensual affair, apparently, according to her, that lasted several years. Yes, he kept luring me in, she told the magazine. I felt like I couldn't say no. No! (laughs) Baby, you can't say no to the jello. That's right. She went public in 2005. Barbara Bowman, next victim, a teenage model and actress at the time, and the time was 1985. At the time, starring in The Cosby Show... In 1985, Cosby met the then 17-year-old Bowman in Denver and visited her a number of times, giving her acting lessons and flying her around major cities to events. She told Newsweek after she turned 18, Cosby assaulted me a number of times. In in one incident in New York, Bowman said, had one glass of wine and then I blacked out. I woke up throwing up in the toilet. I was wearing a white t-shirt and it wasn't mine. And he was in a white robe that wasn't his. Oh. An incident in Atlantic City. An angry Cosby got on top of me and started taking his pants off, and I was screaming and crying, begging him to leave me alone. And I I fought so hard, I was screaming so loud, and he got mad and threw me aside and got away from me, and that was it. Okay. Um, not rape. <laughs> the statement of Cosby's attorney Schmidt released Sunday said, Over the last several weeks, decade-old discredited allegations against Mr. Cosby have resurfaced. The fact that they are being repeated does not make them true. Mr. Cosby does not intend to dignify these allegations with any comment. She went public in 2006 and has since written a Washington Post column published November 13th. Now, for the real fun part of the show. (laughs) Yes, I've I've given you all the the facts now. Now it's uh, Crash's tidbit time. Yeah, tidbit time. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm not buying it. Still not seeing it. There's there's nothing here, you know, like... I, I don't get it. Full stop. That There is, by far, there is light years too much for this man to lose, aside from his reputation and his family. To, to ever do this kind of stuff. And really, you know, if you if you would allege something like, oh, he's got, um, well, he's got those tendencies, you know, he has psychological problems. If you want to go there, he's got more than enough money to hire any kind of prostitute anywhere and have anything like that acted out. Uh-huh. It's it's sad but true. So if you want to go to the psychological aspect, well, you better be bringing up about 1,700, if not 17,000 hookers from all the way back from 1969 to today 
who can show a forensic path of, of this kind of behavior in this man uh, to establish any sort of pattern whatsoever, to even have a hope of any of these allegations, you know, being actually looked at as anything but BS. And and I'll go you one better on that, too. <clears throat> what really gets me is when you... Well, oh, okay. Uh, that, that's right. We are going to go for a quick commercial break. Uh, when we come back, I'll finish up my stuff with him, and we'll get on to a few other fun things before we wrap things up tonight. So uh, back in two, gang. Hang on. And you're listening to HTLA Radio 1 New York. It could be 7 in the morning. Or 10 at night. In Chilliwack, B.C. Or St. Peter's, Nova Scotia. It could be Michelle. Or Mark. Or Jen. But whenever. Wherever you order that cup of Jim Horton's premium blend coffee. You know that it's always. Always. Always fresh. From Newfoundland and Labrador to Vancouver Island, Tim Hortons, a coffee all our own. I always said shoes are like women. They inspire beautiful music. But what about these? Stilettos sound like this. What does my fragrance inspire? Mmm, that's got soul. My ties are beautiful. They don't need music. Bringing the stars together. That's the magic of Macy's. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. Those are two things you'll find in Camels. No other cigarette has Camels' rich, full flavor. The flavor of costly tobaccos, properly aged and expertly blended. And no other cigarette gives you this conclusive evidence of mildness. In a coast-to-coast -coast test... Hundreds of people smoked only camels for 30 days. Each week, noted throat specialists examined the throats of these smokers and reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Yes, that's proof of mildness based on day-in, day-out smoking. Not just a sniff or a puff. Make your own 30-day camel mildness test. The sensible test. The thorough test. You'll enjoy Camel's rich, full flavor from first puff to last. You'll see just how mild Camel's are. And you'll know why more people smoke Camel's than any other cigarette. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the Camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke Camel's and see. You've got it locked to New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1, New York. Oh, yeah. yeah. <sighs> we are back on the old coffee and cigarettes here, the Wednesday double shot to help you get through your hump day nightmare. Yes. And what better way to get through the hump day than talk about Bill Cosby humping? There you go. Um, yeah, 34 degrees, Central Park still. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, we'll have to kill them. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty funky today. Uh, special shout-out and thanks to Joanne Bagnall from Nanaimo, Canada, for tuning in tonight. Uh, very, very, very 
I got to say this. This is this is quite a treat, actually. Uh, she is a, a very close friend, personal friend of the one, the only, who, Louis Lawless. Yes, who is joining us live from the Mill Bay Studios. Uh, Louis, are you are you still there, Louis? Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, yes, yes, it is. I think it should be short and sweet. Well, and and as always uh, with you, it, it always is. That was a mistake on my part. Well, I know, but it happens sometimes. Uh, and also uh, joining us uh, this evening via satellite from his uh, lavish studio apartment in Memphis, Tennessee. No, Clarksville. God, I always get that wrong. <sighs> the one, the only, Chris Top. You know, a couple of years ago, and I thought this just happened to old men. I, maybe that's saying something. I don't know. But I fell in the shower, and people made fun of me forever. They said I should have got one of those little ducky things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the the ducky things. I think your um, connection might be busting up a little bit there on the satellite, Chris. It's like my head just, it, it bounced off the side, of it, like a basketball. It just bounced, and then it hit it again, and then bounced a little bit. Uh-huh. And I had a big knot right. on my head uh, for like three weeks. Uh-huh. after. It was like a golf ball. It was, mm-hmm. it was horrible. Right. And, uh, of course, the one, the only, Jenny McCartney in the booth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you are, Jen. Nice to see you again, all three of you. Oh, wait. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Straighten that up there. As Mark Keeler is no more. And if you want to know what happened, he, he got fired last night during the first commercial break. And, uh, well, we got to play some nice Jamaican music, Mon. Yes, we did. Uh, today on the show, kind of been dominating the show today, which is why I'm going to go a little longer with some of the other things I had lined up for the coffee shop today, because they're, they're exciting and fun, too. Uh, has been Bill Cosby. Yes, the cause. And all the rape allegations. Uh, the the final point I wanted to actually bring up uh, about that today mm-hmm. is that have you seen these women? Oh, you know, I think they would have a better time accusing Ray Charles of rape. Oh, I think they might find some attorneys that could actually prosecute that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, so, so yeah, that's it. Sorry uh, to displease everybody. I'm, I'm not racist. I'm, I'm fully behind Bill Cosby on this one, and I think it's appalling that all of this stuff is taking place when they just wanted memes. <laughs> yes, and join me tomorrow at this time when I'll put out the call on Twitter myself for my own memes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, see what that turns up. That'll be that'll be something fun, won't it, kids? That's right. That's right. Uh, so, Jen, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, work with the New York woman, the Ebola girl, and then we'll go to uh, the Obama dealio, and we'll wrap that up. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, that's exactly what we're going to do now. Um, yeah. So the woman with Ebola who died in New York, Brooklyn hair salon this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. And, and yes, I'm laughing. Yes. Well, no, not because she died. No, that would be kind of harsh, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah don't want to do that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. Uh, but yeah, yeah, a uh, woman, uh, 18 days uh, from being in uh, one of the Western African countries that are afflicted with Ebola, uh, has since flown to New York to be with her family and friends. And well, <clears throat> uh, she was down at a uh, Brooklyn hair salon this afternoon and dropped dead. Not kidding. True story. USA Today. Look it up. It's the Brooklyn Hair Salon Death. You go find that one. It's there. And um, <clears throat> yes, well, as you can imagine, this caused no end of of overreaction, freaking out, people running through the streets, burning their underwear, all that good stuff. Only to find, released this morning from the uh, New York coroner. Thank you. Another fine cup of the fineness. Mm. Ah. And uh, only to find that no, no, 
She she most certainly did not die in the uh, clutches of the Ebola. No, no. No. No, she, she died of a heart attack. And everything is good. There we go. Actually, no. Can we get a kid's cheer for that? Yeah. There we go. She she didn't die of Ebola. But she could have, damn it. And then we could have been really scared. Yes. <laughs> really scared. So, yeah, let's get on to bigger and better things now. Who needs the, the woman who died of Ebola, not Ebola? Right? Right. And, uh, yeah. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, on the big shoe, yes, the coffee and cigarettes for Thursday which I, I haven't figured out the coffee name for that yet, but I'll let you know. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And um, <clears throat> tomorrow is the big day. That is when Obama is uh, swinging his huge presidential balls uh, in, in a ballsy, I'm, I'm going to say it, a ballsy, ballsy effort here. Uh, and, and it's pretty much known, apparently, what he is going to do. But he's going to announce... His immigration plan. Yes, President Obama will use a Thursday speech roll to roll out his new executive orders that would grant legal status to millions of migrants now in the country illegally, official said Wednesday. In a video announcement posted to Facebook today on the White House website, Obama said he will address the nation at 8 p.m. Eastern Time Thursday. So for you folks out on the Pacific there, that's 5 p.m., he says, quote, what I'm going to be laying out is the things that I can do with my lawful authority as president to make this system work better. Even as I continue to work with Congress and encourage them to get a bipartisan comprehensive bill that can solve the entire problem, Obama says on video. It's time to fix our broken immigration system. So tomorrow night, I will address the nation on a new common sense step that I am taking to fitch fix, sorry, as much of this as I can. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, the announcement will also trigger a major political battle, apparently, with Republicans as they prepare to take control of the Senate early next year and expand their majority in the House. Obama said he will follow up the primetime speech with an event Friday at the Del Sol High School in Las Vegas, the same school where in early 2013, he announced the comprehensive immigration plan that has since stalled in Congress. In addition, the president had a dinner meeting at the White House on Wednesday with some 18 congressional Democrats, said an Obama spokesman Josh Ernest. The president and his aides have been working on orders that would grant legal status to defer deportation for up to 5 million immigrants currently in the country illegally. There are between 11 million and 12 million undocumented immigrants in the country. Republicans have attacked the per perspective orders as an abuse of executive authority, one GOP spokesman made a reference to Emperor Obama. Michael Steele, a spokesman for the White House Speaker John Boner, uh, well, Republican Ohio, said that if Emperor Obama ignores the American people and announces an amnesty plan that he himself has said over and over needs, exceeds, sorry, his constitutional authority, he will cement his legacy of lawlessness. Oh, there you go, Louis. I think it should be short and sweet. Yes. And ruin the chances for congressional action on this issue and many others. Senator Chuck Grasley, Republican of Iowa, said the come, incoming chairman of the state judiciary committee told reporters that the president is doing the wrong thing and I'll do whatever I can to override whatever he's trying to do. Obama has said that he will issue executive orders because the Republican-run House has refused to take up a Senate-approved immigration plan for more than a year. And, and for once, he's actually right about that. Obama is considering protecting up to 5 million current undocumented immigrants from any deportation proceedings. Most of those are expected to be parents with children who were born in the U.S., meaning they are U.S. citizens. He may also consider extending the pool of young un undocumented immigrants who have been protected under a 2012 program for granting protections to undocumented immigrants who have been in the country for long periods of time. 
Department of Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson said Wednesday that the president will also improve border security. Only Congress can order the hiring of thousands of boarding border patrol agents, but Obama himself can increase their salaries and redeploy immigration agents spread around the country to the southwest border. The administration is also considering changes to the program called Secure Communities, which helps local police check the immigration status of suspects they've arrested for local crimes. The plan is emerged. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's it's me, Jen. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, the administration is also considering changes to the program called Secure Communities, which will help the. Oh yes, I. <laughs> I, I read that, Louis. Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> you you know it. Yes. <laughs> so where the hell am I? What's my name? That plan has angered many immigration advocates and Democrats who say it turns local police into immigration agents, while Republicans and some law enforcement officials say it's critical to track immigration violators around the country. (sighs) Wow, what a mess. Nevada, where Obama speaks on Friday, is the state where the highest share of the population is undocumented. The state's 210,000 undocumented immigrants make up 10.2% of the population. The only state in the double digits, according to the Pew Research Center, that ranks Nevada ahead of immigrant-heavy states such as California at 9.4% and Texas at 8.9%. Obama has figured that Republicans in Congress have forced his hand by refusing to pass any kind of bill that fixes the nation's broken immigration system. Everybody agrees that our immigration system is broken, the president said on his Facebook post. Unfortunately, Washington has allowed the problem to fester for far too long. The Senate passed a bill in summer of 2013 that was co-authored by a group of eight senators, four Republicans and four Democrats. The bill would have allowed eight million undocumented immigrants to apply for citizenship after a 13-year legalization process. Provided 38 billion to double <laughs> to double the size of the border patrol and new technology along the border and revamp legal immigration to allow more high-tech and lower skilled workers to enter the country. That's that's a long one. <laughs> Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Oh, thank you for grounding me, Louie. You, you, you keep me grounded, brother. I think it should be short and sweet. I wish it was. Boner <laughs> refused to let his chamber consider that bill, saying he preferred a slower step-by-step approach to immigration reform that started with border security. Boner and other House leaders introduced a set of immigration principles in January and said they would guide their process. But over the summer, as more than 60,000 Central American children flooded the southwest border, Boner declared the issue is dead. Obama, frustrated by the inaction, said he would respond by implementing a unilateral action. He indicated that he would represent an expansion of the program be created in 2012 the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program that has granted deportation protections to more than 580,000 undocumented immigrants brought to the country as children. But the president missed his self-imposed deadline act by the end of the summer. Democratic senators facing tight races pleaded with the White House to hold off, arguing that an executive action would rile up Republican opposition and kill their electoral chances. The president did so, but Democrats ended up losing the Senate anyway. And really, I, 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 I'm I, sorry, I don't think in, in any reality they lost the control of the Senate because of that. No, no, I don't. Part of Obama's process these last recent weeks has been legal review of his options, Aide said. What we'll probably confidently be able to do is explain to you what legal authority the president is using to take these actions, Ernest said. In the White House blog post that accompanied the Obama video, Ernest wrote that our immigration system has been broken for decades and every minute that we fail to act, millions of people who live in the shadows but want to play by the rules and pay taxes have no way to live right by the law and contribute to our country. And you know what? I got to say this because, you know, I, as most of you know, I I came here in 2010 and uh, was it easy? (laughs) 
<laughs> Hell no. Hell no. Still in process, in fact. Yeah. Four plus years now I've been here. Working, slaving away. You know, hanging out with the all the, the radio staffers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, right. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, there you go. You know, and, and not only do I not have a criminal record, I, I've, I've been to police academy in Canada. Yes, I have. Yes. You, most of you know that too. So, and, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I know most of you don't know my entire work life, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty competent and skilled professional, aren't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a mistake on my part. What? No. Huh? I lived in I lived in Greenwich Village for a while when I first started as an actor. I I know I know I think you mentioned that oh I don't know Did, yeah you told us that didn't you I think it should be short and sweet. Right okay um let's let's go to the kids on the street what do you think? <laughs> See there you go they they agree I I would be a a, a fine fine upstanding American. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, <clears throat> long and the short of that gang is we're going to wait and see, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. We are. And uh, I guess this time tomorrow night we'll know. And uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I really don't. You know, part of me thinks, hey, if he's going to just sign off on us all, woohoo! Right on. But then I'm kind of ticked because, you know, I've been four years going through their hoops and levers and challenges and everything, and it hasn't been easy. Um, but, you know, maybe it'll all end tomorrow, and and this little Mexican will become an American. <laughs> yes. Well, um, I do have more for the show tonight, but we're already at 81 minutes, so I think what I'm going to do is is we'll round her off right at an hour and a half. I know we're only supposed to do that on Mondays and, and uh, Fridays. Every other day of the week is supposed to be in an hour. But, you know, it's a new show. We only started it two Mondays ago. Uh, we're in our halfway through our second week here. We're still feeling it out and, and yeah, yeah, feeling it out and making it. <laughs> yeah, see? We're, we're just, uh, we're still working on things here. So, you know, bear with us. You know, it might be an hour and a half show a day. Uh or or ten hours, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ten hours a day, and uh, um. Well, I guess another eight hours in. in well, no. Well, six hours in pre-production. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, eight hours broadcasting, and then uh, I don't know about seven or eight, eight in post. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. Sorry. Um. Where am I? What's <laughs> What's my name? Uh, well, the only other thing I was really going to get into here, I'm, I'm not touching Ferguson. <laughs> no, <clears throat> the only other thing I wanted to get into here today is the, well, the weather. Yeah, it's hot in here. <laughs> uh, I think now would be a good time for my George Takai impression. Oh, yes, I'm gay. Oh, my. Uh, that, that helps. That's better. That was a mistake on my part. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's it's just we're just full retard here, isn't it? Never go full retard. <laughs> I, we we did. We're gone. <sighs> well, fingers crossed that you were sitting in the coffee shop here today, checking out uh, Jenny and and hanging with me, and not trying to fly into Buffalo. <laughs> Mm. Yes, <clears throat> Buffalo, New York, <laughs> for a second day. Cancellations, cancellations, cancellations. At Buffalo Niagara International Airport, record-setting snow pummels parts of the western New York, well, yeah, seven feet. Seven. Count them. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many kids we got? Yeah, seven. Seven feet. Not even kidding. Man, I remember as a kid growing up in Victoria and into my 20s and 30s and 40s and hell, even to today, 
I think the biggest snowfall I can remember was the the winter of 1996 in which we had like three feet dump on us overnight. And that was like absolutely unheard of, never before, never again. Oh, my God. You know, I remember I I spent two days. um, I I was living actually in James Bay, which is an area in in Victoria, British Columbia, which uh, has a lot of elderly people in high-rise apartment buildings. So... Me and my friends and a couple of my 5150 production staff were out there uh, literally digging tunnels to, to some uh, apartment lobbies so that the old folks could get out and get up to the store. It was a, it was a bloody nightmare. Uh, seven feet <laughs> now uh, reported in many parts of New York State. Seven feet within three days, and it's not letting up for at least till Friday, they say. Yeah, there you go. Not funny. Anywho, the airport is record-setting snow pummeling them. Uh, Several are dead, and the snow just keeps coming. More than five feet is already on the ground in most areas nearby the airport, and it's at least easily a year's worth of snow. Almost seven feet in three days. There is some good news, though. Well, if we can call it that. At least four big airlines are waiving chart change fees for several airports in the Great Lakes region. In other snow-related news, the Buffalo Bills are hiring snow shovelers for 10 bucks an hour. There you go. That's that's almost uh, the $15 an hour minimum wage. <laughs> it's close. Come on. And today is also, as we've mentioned earlier in the show, the day that Hollywood gave up on Bill Cosby. No one knows if the allegations of rape are true, but in the court of public opinion, Bill Cosby has been indicted. The latest is NBC has dropped a deal with Cosby to do a sitcom, and Netflix has nixed the special it was set to do on air November 28th, entitled Bill Cosby at 77. Model Janice Dickinson is adding her name to the growing list of women accusing Cosby of sexual abuse. An old Cosby bit about drugging women is going viral... Of course it would. Former district attorney said he didn't charge Cosby with sexual assault in 2005. There was not enough evidence. And finally, the internet exploded after CNN's Don Lemon suggested to one of Cosby's accusers that she could have gnawed her way out of danger. But I'm just... <sighs> yeah, yeah, got a feel. Poor man. And uh, another little recap here. Obama using Facebook to plug the big immigration plan and we will see tomorrow exactly what that is black friday is losing its power yeah black friday is that day in the united states where you shop or die if you're opting to stay home this black friday to nurse yourself after a post thanksgiving binge you're not alone retail retailers keep expecting black friday sales throughout november and more deals over a longer period of time mean shoppers are way less likely to battle it out on Black Friday. According to a new survey, most shoppers won't head to the stores the day after Thanksgiving. If you are shopping, be mindful of these 10 toys. Oh yes, there's there's 10 toys that you're supposed to be watching out for, but I know my listeners, you guys are smart. You're not going to you're not going to be swayed by any of that. You you've already done your Christmas shopping. You did layaway in June on Amazon, didn't you? Yeah, well, if you didn't, you should have. And that, my fine feathered kitty friends, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the new producer gal for HTLA for our shows. Jenny, thank you. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, and, and thank you again, Mr. Lawless, for being online via satellite from the beautiful Mill Bay Studios in Mill Bay, B.C. Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Excellent. And Chris Top, of course, from his lavish studio apartment overlooking a, a tree in Clarksville, Tennessee. I hope your head gets better. It's like my head just, it, it bounced off the side, of it, like a basketball. It just bounced, and then it hit it again, and then bounced a little bit. And I had a big knot on my head uh-huh. uh, for like three weeks. after. It was like a golf ball. It was, it was horrible. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, I am going to get out of here now, leave you to the rest of your Wednesday, and uh, we'll see you around here 7 p.m. tomorrow night for coffee and cigarettes. 
Good night.